I'm going to give you seven quotes about money from people who seem to know how to have a good relationship with money. Hi there, my name is James and thank you so much for checking out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. If you're the person in your family who's responsible for the finances, there may be a strong chance that this is a major source of stress for you in your life. I certainly know at the moment, I probably feel like I spend more time worrying about money, not having enough, constant rise of the cost of living, and making sure we've got enough money in the bank. With that in mind, here are seven quotes that certainly help me to feel a bit more calm about money, and hopefully it might help you out if you're in a similar place. The first quote comes from one of the richest men on the planet, Warren Buffett. Do not save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after saving. So my understanding of this is basically make saving a priority in your life. Human beings are creatures of habits. And if you make saving just part of your life, after all, it just becomes automatic. I also find if you make paying your bills a priority and also paying your savings account a priority, and therefore the money that's left in your bank account after having done all that is basically what is your true disposable income. You're probably going to be in a better financial situation throughout your life. The next quote comes from the author of the best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. It's not how much money you make, but how much money you keep, how hard it works for you, and how many generations you keep it for. That's the difference I see between people who are very good with money and people who aren't. People who are very good with money see money as a vehicle or a process to make them more money. If you use money as a tool and invest wisely into things that actually appreciate, then you're never going to have a problem with money. That's obviously much easier said than done. And the saying, the first million is the hardest one to make, is very true. And the third quote comes from Dave Ramsey. A budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. If you have a budget, and you know exactly how much that budget is, and you stick to it, then you shouldn't really have a problem with money. The problem often that people have with money isn't that there isn't enough money, it's more that they're living beyond their means. That four pound coffee that you have every day might not seem a major extravagance, but if you're having it every day, Four times 365 becomes quite a substantial amount of money, especially for a bit more work and maybe a bit more preparation. You can go to the supermarket and buy yourself some ground coffee that can make you 10 cups of coffee for the same price. I found certainly when I've been worried about money, the thing that's really helped is to sit down, to go through my last month's expenses and work out exactly where my money is going. Make a list of all the incomings that you have to pay mortgage, bills, fuel for the car, stuff for the family, things that are non-negotiables, and make sure you've got that money. And look at the things you're spending your money on that are a bit beyond your means. Do you really need that gym membership for that gym you're not going to? Are there lots of subscriptions to apps that you don't use anymore? You might be shocked if you go through your finances with a fine tooth comb to realize how much money you're spending on takeaways, how much money you're spending on coffee, how much money you're spending on nights out. I've heard it said the best thing to do when you're feeling anxious is get more education, get more knowledge on a situation that you're anxious about. Because then you're in control of it. It won't erase the problem. It'll just make you aware of the problem. And then you can create a plan to how to deal with the problem. And the fourth quote about money comes from Suze Orman. The only way you will ever permanently take control of your financial life is to dig deep and fix the root problem. I take this to mean that like most things, a lot of the decisions we make are emotionally driven. And quite often, if you're spending lots and lots of money, maybe it's to make up for an other element of your life that you feel is lacking. If you're lonely or you're sad or you feel unfulfilled, buying some new shiny stuff might make you feel momentarily happier. And I totally get that. And I really hope this doesn't come across as smug. It does a little bit. But I generally don't want anything. There's nothing I really want. I'm not desperate for a new car. I'm not desperate for new clothes. I feel pretty happy and fulfilled. And don't get me wrong, I'm still definitely a work in progress. Your mental health's still a bit of an unknown quantity. Thanks. 
But actually, the fact that I don't really want any material things means that I feel like I've got quite a good relationship with money. I could probably reduce the number of takeout coffees or takeaways I have. Or phone tripods. If you feel that you've got a problem with money, maybe dig deep and think, well, why is that? Am I unfulfilled in other elements of my life? And you might find that doing some deeper work on yourself or what actually makes you happy can help you fix some financial problems. And this leads on nicely to my fifth quote about money from Epictetus, who famously said, wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. A rich man is a man who doesn't actually want anything. I infuriate my wife every birthday and Christmas when I tell her I really don't want anything. New pants, new socks, a bag of ground coffee, Toblerone, maybe a Toblerone, and I'm pretty happy. And obviously this is a major generalization, but I imagine that probably describes most dads. Most dads are happiest when their family are happy. And if that sounds like you, then congratulate yourself that you're probably in a much better place than you think you are. Now, my sixth quote about money comes from Will Rogers. Too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. Again, this kind of just highlights the idea that maybe if you're spending money to maintain the self-image that you want of yourself, that doesn't actually make you happy then maybe do some work on what actually makes you happy. For example, I was in a nine to five job, but didn't actually fulfill me in the way that creating content, editing podcasts, writing books, and trying to support other dads struggling with mental health really fulfills me. This year has been a challenge financially because leaving that fairly safe, well-paid job and ultimately being self-employed has been a bit more treacherous. And again, I don't say this to sound smug. I apologize if it does. Even though my finances could do with some support, I'm much more excited about how I earn my money these days. I feel a lot more fulfilled. I don't have that Sunday night feeling. I don't have an annoying and controlling and micromanaging boss. I actually am doing something that I enjoy. It doesn't feel like work. And because of that, the money will come. And obviously, I would not advise anyone, especially at the moment, to jump ship on a well-paid job to follow some passion project. That would be fairly foolhardy, certainly at the moment. But maybe start looking at ways, maybe developing a side project that on top of your 9-to-5 brings in a bit of extra money that may one day replace that 9-to-5. Because even if it takes you a decade to get to that point, you might find that you then have two or three decades of doing work that you actually love and gets rid of that Sunday night feeling of dread that you're about to embark on a week of doing work that you don't want to do. And the last quote about money comes from the Roman philosopher, Greek philosopher. I always get that wrong. Seneca. He was Roman. It's not the man that has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. If you're genuinely content with what you have, then you're rich. If you're not, then there'll never be enough new suits, new cars, new homes, new material possessions. If you feel like you're generally craving more, if it's never enough, there's never enough money, you've never got enough new things, then the problem I don't think is the money or your relationship with money. I think the problem is your relationship with you. Because some of the happiest people I know have very little. And some of the most unhappy people I know are very financially wealthy. I really hope you got some of this podcast. And as a thank you to making it to the end of this video, I've got a little present for you. If you go to my website, dadmindmatters.com and sign up for my newsletter, I'll be able to send you the stress management course I usually sell online for nothing. That said, this offer only lasts for the month of August. So if you're feeling a bit stressed out and want some advice on how to combat that, maybe go and do that now. All right, bossy. And there's an extra bonus little present if after doing the course, you'd like some support on how to develop it further and you want some help to create an action plan to manage your stress, you can book in a complimentary 15 minute Zoom session. Once you've done the course, the link's in this description. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay, take care.